You know, a lot of people are trying to start a company and, you know, be a unicorn within a year or two. And if you do that, you can maybe do that. And sometimes that works, but you know, often that doesn't work. But if you just try to make steady progress year over year and sustain that for many years in a row, that compounds over time. And, and if you do that, you'll definitely be successful. You can just make steady progress year over year for long periods of time. Boom. I love it. You heard it here first. Okay. I well, appreciate uh, you, bro. Good to see you, man. Yeah. All right. Justin just whipped that camera out. I was not ready for that. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Justin. Justin Khan from Justin.tv. All right, what's up guys? Today I wanna to talk to you about leveling up your skills. People think, they often think, I'm not good at X. To me, that just means that you don't care enough to get good at X because people can get good at anything that they want to. And I think my life is a great example of that. Often I get comments like, oh, Justin, you're so confident. Uh, you must have been born that way. Or you're a great public speaker, you're a great storyteller. Well, all those things are learned habits and behaviors, learned skills. All those things came from really putting myself out there and trying to improve. It wasn't natural. In fact, I was very shy as a kid and not very good at public speaking. Justin's changed from my perspective in that when I met him, he was very quiet because he was you know, basically a fish out of water in YC. I was very scared of talking to people and through hard work and through putting myself in uncomfortable positions, I got better at it. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, one of my mentors and early investors in Justin TV, the company that became Twitch, uh, Paul Buhite, who was the inventor of Gmail, used to say that it's not about your Y intercept, it's about where your slope is. In other words, it's not where you start, it's about how fast you're growing, what your rate of progression is. That's what really determines your ultimate outcome. I love that quote. So I wanna give you some examples of skills that I've leveled up over the years. We'll start with, man, it's hot as shit in here, hang on. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start with number one, public speaking. I've spoken in front of audiences of thousands of people. I think my largest one was 10,000 plus. I've done speaking gigs where I have gone with no notes, no preparation. I've just got on stage and I've riffed on things. I've done team meetings like that for my teams at my startups. In fact, team meeting at my startups was one of my favorite things uh, because I just get to get up there, bring some energy, and really put on a show for people. But it didn't always used to be like that. In fact, when I was a kid, I was cripplingly shy. I remember... In sixth grade, I had to do a presentation and uh, in front of my class. It was like a summer camp. And I did the entire presentation with my papers over my face right here so I wouldn't have to look any of my classmates in the eye. So, you know, I went from that to speaking in front of thousands of people. Well, I just, it was like exposure therapy. By the time I got into startups or, you know, my early 20s, I was like, okay, I want to get better at this. So I would go put myself in positions where I'd have to go talk in front of other people. You know, I went to Toastmasters, just like a club where you give speeches in front of other people. Right before I'd go on stage, I would feel so much anxiety. I'd be like, oh my God, why did I do this? I hate my previous self for putting me in this position. I started to get used to it and I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. That's how I got good at public speaking. Another great example and really important skill is programming. A lot of my friends, they started when they were like really young, you know, whatever, started learning how to program. Uh, I started learning how to program in high school, which I guess is probably on the younger side. And I was really fortunate. This guy, Greg Shaw, he was a Microsoft employee, like early Microsoft. He had created, he was one of the founding engineers of this company called 3Com, and, uh, which invented Ethernet. And he was teaching a programming class for free at this community center in Rainier Valley in Seattle. And I went to this programming class and it was it was pretty awesome I mean and he basically taught me the basics of programming but I did not pick it up easily it was very confusing to me it was hard I like didn't understand a lot of the core concepts you know it was exposure which was great by the time I got to college I didn't take computer science I was a physics major which means you're a shitty programmer so in school I didn't like really understand anything about programming eventually Emin and I wanted to start a company and so we were starting a company Kiko and I had to learn to program because that was all I could you know that's what we needed to do to get the company to work and so it was just really me Googling JavaScript tutorials. How do I make something drag and drop on the internet? How do I, you know, I had to figure out how to cobble something together that looked like a calendar. And I, you know, I was just like really teaching myself the basics by looking online, you know, but we were not geniuses when we first started our first company. We did not really understand that much about programming. We just figured it out. 
Uh, we learn by doing. No special school required. Another example of this is management. I was a horrible manager uh, when we started off. Everyone is, but unlike most people who start companies who have a couple years of experience working at a real company, we had no experience. So we didn't know anything. We like For the first many years, we didn't do one-on-ones with our team members. We didn't do performance reviews. We didn't know any of this stuff. And honestly, if you work for Justin TV in the early days, I'm sorry, I apologize. You know, we were terrible at management. We didn't understand anything about goal setting. And that was all some stuff that we learned by doing on the job. You know, no one starts off as a natural manager. Everyone learns by doing. You know, one of the things that helped me there was getting coaches, getting management coaches, CEO coaches, and learning from people who are a couple steps ahead of me. One advice I always have is like, find mentors who are one or two steps ahead of you. Don't necessarily go to the guy who's like the CEO of eBay, you know, or the CEO of Amazon or something like that, because they don't even remember what it's like to manage, you know, at your level. Go to the person who's, you know, if you're a new manager, go to the person who just started managing two years ago. Ask them what pitfalls they came across. All right, let's talk about fitness. So if you follow me, you know, for the the last, Five years, if you followed me on Snapchat, I would say fitness is the first step to greatness. Really believe that. Uh, And I work out, you know, I've worked out every day for the last, um, you know, with the exception of the time around my elbow surgery, every day for the last two years, two and a half years. People see me and they're like, oh my God, that guy must be so into fitness. They must really love it. But to be honest, I kind of hate working out. That's the truth. I do it because I know it makes me feel good afterwards and I feel healthy, Uh, but I don't love it. Is the other thing, I was never really good at it. I was picked last for every team I was on in school. Like when I was on the rugby team in college, I said I was the triple threat. I was slow, I had bad hand-eye coordination, and I took tackles like a bitch. I was a terrible athlete. But with fitness, for me, it was, okay, I'm gonna just create a habit where I can do it every day. I'm gonna find things I love to do. You know, uh, that, that took a long time. Then it was like weightlifting. Eventually I found weightlifting. I found yoga, um, trying to do a handstand, like just things that were fun for me to, to practice. Um, so it's really about finding your joy. I think exploration is really important to figure out what do you love uh, in these various skills that you're trying to develop. And then, you know, what else can be important is, um, is just making it really low barrier to entry for you to try it. I need a gym in my house because I'm going to, be there then. And uh, another hack I, d- I used was like, I'm only going to put my phone with Twitter on it in my gym. So that's going to incentivize me to go down and I'm only going to say you can use your Twitter when you're in the gym. I'm not trying to work out an hour a day. I'm just trying to work out for five minutes a day. And there's no excuse ever that you can't work out for five minutes. I broke both elbows and I was in the gym doing squats, air squats, five minutes of air squats. You know, you can do that. I was on a lot of oxy post-surgery and I could do five minutes of air squats. So uh, you know, there's really, it's about making it easy for yourself. But with a lot of these habits, it's about accountability. So finding a buddy to go to the gym with, uh, that really worked for me. Sometimes I use the internet to hold myself accountable. You know, when I quit drinking, I said, uh, hey, I'm going to quit drinking. I've had this problem my whole life. And I put it out there on Twitter. And I, I just didn't want to be a hypocrite. So that helped me keep on the uh, straight and narrow, you know, stay on the bandwagon. All right, so that's a little summary. Those are some of the things that I've done to level up myself. The point being, not that I'm so great at any of these skills, to be honest, I'm not. The point is I started from like not that great of a place and I worked my way up and I don't believe that there's anything I couldn't do if I set my mind to it and I figured out what is an infrastructure or framework for me to make incremental progress every day. I think of as skills and mental health and wellness in general as you're filling drops in a bucket. You know, every time you exercise, every time you meditate, every time you speak in public, every time you sit down and write something, a program, whatever you're working on, you're putting one drop in a bucket. The individual drops don't matter, but eventually you have a full bucket, and that's like being good at something. That's available to anyone who puts their mind to it. If you have heart, if you stick with it, you can be good at anything, I swear, I promise. All right, there it is. All right, what's up guys? I'm driving to San Francisco. I just had to start recording this vlog because I feel so good right now and nothing's really happened you know I got up this morning I did a very short meditation only 15 minutes and I did a very weak workout 15 minutes on the exercise bike uh, at the place I was staying uh, Carneros in Napa Valley saw some friends yesterday uh, which was nice and 
I just feel so good today. I feel so grateful. You know, that things you know, things in the outside world, yeah, they're going they're going pretty well. But I just feel so much gratitude to be connected to the people around me, my family, uh, my friends, uh, and even just like the global pool of humanity. I feel like humankind is coming out of coronavirus, at least in the United States, and uh, there's a lot of optimism. And yeah, it just feels really good, and I feel really grateful right at this moment. One of the things I've been doing for the last three years is practicing building the muscle of gratitude. Uh, when I first heard about practicing gratitude, I was I was very confused. My friend, Amif, came to me and he said, you know, he'd been doing this gratitude journal and every day he would open this app called Five Minute Journal and write down three things that he was grateful for. Uh, that was it, same thing every day, same exercise. We were at coffee and I was like, why? What does that do? You know, and he said, just, I just feel much better. And so I decided to try it out. I was like, okay, let's try it. What's the harm, right? It's five minutes every morning. So if I do it for a week, that's 35 minutes. And I can afford to take that kind of chance with my time. And so I did it. And a week in, I just felt a little different. I felt a little bit more grateful and connected. Just a little happier, whatever was happening. And, you know, oftentimes we think our extrinsic circumstances drive how happy we are. So I often thought, I'll be happy when things on the outside world are going well, when my company raises money, when we're growing. And one of the things that practicing gratitude for one week taught me was, well, there's something to be grateful for every day. Sometimes it's just the global supply chain that brings me this cup of coffee in the morning. Uh, or it's my health, or you know, the health of my family, or to have brothers that I'm close to as an adult. I found it wasn't often the material things, you know, it wasn't usually, oh, I'm really grateful for my G-Wagon or something like that, you know. It was usually just being connected to the people around me uh, to have experiences. And so after I practiced for a week, I just felt so good. And I kept it going. And I've done it pretty much every day for the last three years. I think I'm about to hit three years, actually, uh, since 2018. So... You know, it's five minutes every day, and if I could recommend to you one way to build that muscle of gratitude, uh, it would be this. I think they've done studies that show that if you practice gratitude, you actually are much happier on a daily basis, regardless of whatever's happening on the extrinsic or the outside world. That's it. That's one one tip, gratitude. But today, you know, we're going into San Francisco. I'm going to go see some friends of mine. It's nice that the world's reopening and I'm able to travel around a little bit more. And uh, I'm just really excited, really, really feel that deep gratitude. I wanted to share that with you because no matter who you are, no matter what your circumstances, there's always something to be grateful for. I really believe that. And of course, whenever I say that, someone's gonna say, well, that's some rich guy shit. You have all your basic needs taken care of. You don't have to work. You don't have a stressful job. That's all true. You know, but I have had stressful jobs and I've had moments where things weren't going super well. Uh, I remember one moment 18 months ago, a little over 18 months now, I broke my elbows, broke both arms of mine in a, a bicycle accident. And I couldn't use either arm. Um, my left arm. Uh, elbow, the radial head shattered. I think I've been talked a couple times about it on the channel. I mean, there was immense pain. I had to have this surgery to replace my radial head with a prosthetic. Uh, but then I started checking in with myself on how do I feel this moment? Do I wish things were different? Or can I find something to be grateful for in this moment? I remember being in the back of the ambulance on the way to the hospital, I was thinking to myself, well, it's amazing that there's these EMTs being able to help me and take me to the hospital so quickly. And I was just very thankful for them. And I said that, I was like bleeding out of my mouth. I'd broken my tooth off. 
so it was kind of like um, I wasn't able to speak very enunciate very clearly but I was telling the EMT it was riding in the back of me I'm like I'm tell your partner I'm so grateful for the both of you thank you and I think holding gratitude holding that feeling helped me survive it because the next couple days was really tough my wife was cutting my food for me and pulling up my pants you know I was basically like a full baby mode for me gratitude is not just an option it's not just something I want to practice gratitude is a necessary survival tool and I really believe that so wishing you guys all a grateful day thank you I made it to San Francisco and uh, walking around this is where I used to live for a long time like uh, years and years and years probably almost a decade I'm gonna go meet a friend for lunch I don't miss not living here you know I moved out to the countryside and to be honest I, I like that a lot it's nice to come back and visit but I have no no regrets about not living in the city anymore Friday downtown sunny day and it is empty tons of restaurant spaces for lease feels like the city is in a little bit of a bad way right now unfortunately it is deserted out here I guess everyone really did move to Miami what up, guys okay here I'm with my friend Trip Adler CEO and co-founder of Scribd uh, it's a huge company that uh, allows anybody to read whatever they want on the internet. Or, that's that's right. probably read the worst. or listen. Read or listen now. Books, you, audiobooks, documents, and more for ten dollars a month or whatever device you like. Nice, you got the pitch down. <laughs> I've been uh, so so I've known Trip for fifteen years now. That's scary. Fifteen years, and uh, one thing that's I've always admired about Trip is that he is um, he's like been with the same company for fifteen years. He built this company up. Most of my friends have done like five failed companies, and by most of my friends, I mean me, in that period of time, but he's, he's always stuck with it. So like, what's the secret to, like nothing happens overnight, right? Like nobody makes like the next billion dollar company overnight. People often think they do, but that's not how it works. You have to stay motivated, stay dedicated to, to make it happen. So what's the secret to doing that for you? I mean, I think the, the secret is to just focus on making steady progress each year, year over year. You know, a lot of people are trying to start a company and you know be a unicorn within a year or two and if you do that you can maybe do that and sometimes that works but uh, you know often that doesn't work but if you just try to make steady progress year over year and sustain that for many years in a row that compounds over time and and if you do that you'll 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 definitely be successful you can just make steady progress year over year for long periods of time boom I love it you heard it here first the other thing I'll tell you about trip is like trip had this very meaningful uh, comment offhand comment he told me like it's probably like 12 years ago now or maybe 11 years ago that changed my life and that comment I think I talked about it in another video we're at a party at his office and I'm he was like I was saying I don't think I I, I can't remember how it talk came up we were talking about creativity and I was saying I don't think I'm a very creative person I'm not that creative and, and you were like what are you talking about Justin you're the most creative you're one of the most creative people I know and that completely changed how I think how I thought about myself. Well, I think you're giving me too much credit for uh, <laughs> for changing your life. But I, yeah, you you are one of the most creative people I know. I mean, I I remember I'd be sitting there with Justin, and he would just start out of nowhere, like describing to me his ideas for art, like what he would create. Uh, and I, I mean, he definitely was just just thinking outside the box in a way you know no one else was. And I mean, he's he's a creative guy, so I'm. I'm I'm glad I could have that impact, and uh, I'm glad you're a special advisor to Scribd and yes. helping us uh, helping us evolve our vision. People people don't know that they. I'm gonna pop that up from my LinkedIn. This, I'm a special advisor to Scribd to the Scribd CEO Trip Adler. I don't know if you know this, but in our employee orientation deck, we have a slide with all our advisors, and uh, you're up there on the slide. I, <laughs> I, I tell everyone who joins about all the value add. There we go. We just had lunch. I added a lot of value. Um, all right, you're gonna have to send me that deck. <laughs> Sure. Okay, I well, appreciate uh, you, bro. Good to see you, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, uh, Thanks, everyone. We're gonna hit do you we later. say goodbye or how does this sure, work? Sure. Just say goodbye. Uh, bye, everyone. Good to see you guys. Yeah, Justin just whipped that camera out. I was not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. It's fun to see all of you guys, and uh, we'll uh, check out this video later. All right. All right. All right.